Um, so this is about to be my very first YouTube workout video. I've been doing women's boxing workouts since COVID, like on Saturdays at 10 a.m. on Zoom, but you know, it's cash, so sometimes we skip it. Um, but today I want to make a video one so you all can work out whenever, so let's get started. It's going to be about 30 minutes, we'll, and we're going to work on range, so moving in and out. So let's get started with our warm-up. So in our boxing stance, we're going to start with the, keep a slight bend in your knees, knees pointing forward, feet hip distance apart, the hand that you don't write with, that foot goes forward, elbows to rib cage, hips to Okay, so we're going to start with just straight. So one, two, that's jab, cross. So we're going to do about 30 seconds of straights. You can breathe with each punch. You can just breathe it out, or you can make it sound like this. That's what I do. Okay, we're gonna do a level change, meaning we're gonna do a ground workout right now. Mountain climbers, knee comes up. So in the plank position, knees coming up to chest. You can do obliques and bring knee to opposite elbow. Come back up. Switch to squat jumps. He's pointing forward. I'm gonna do about ten of this. You can always just do stationary squats as well. And then back in our boxing stance for air uppercuts. Now on the uppercuts, the power is coming from your legs. Some people pivot with the uppercut, I do not. I come up, so power is just coming from the squat. Okay, back to the floor. Let me take you guys with me so I can show you. Right here. We're gonna do these plank twists. So in the plank position, twisting from side to side. You don't have to do it in a forearm plank. Just kind of pivoting on your toes. And I'm back up. airspeed bag. So in your boxing stance, you can twist. If you have a regular speed bag, you can use that. Okay, now we're going to do it over again. Straight. Put any music on today because I don't know YouTube rules, but you can always just drown me out because we're gonna do repetitive in the warm up. I'll try to make it as repetitive as possible so you can just put your jams on. Mountain climbers, I'm taking you down with me. Nice. 
shirt. Okay, hands can be under, should be under your shoulders. Bring those knees up or over. And then back up. Four hooks. Oh, yeah, hooks. squats you can do the stationary squat or you can do the squat jump switching gears to the other bit like that that's real fun kind of bringing those shoulders over your hips hips are kind of over your back knee just think about stacking those joints sit bones slightly okay then like that tax a little bit all right plank twists taking you back down Bringing it up and be back. All right, since we're just doing a 30 minute one to start off short and sweet, we're going to move forward to technique. So we're doing range, so inside fighting versus outside. And I will show you on my lovely co-host. Maybe I should name my dad. Okay, so the idea with range is that inside means you're close to your opponent, outside means you're far from the opponent. Typically, you know, inside you're gonna be a little bit lower. Um, this is important because you need to be able to do both and also depends on your height which one you want to get really good at. Typically if you're a shorter fighter and more of your opponents are taller than you, you're um, going to want to do inside because you can go below somebody's punches and get in there on those body shots and over their punches with the overhand. If you're a taller fighter, and you're typically your opponents are a little shorter than you, long punches, outside range is going to be your friend because they can't touch you because you can just keep them, keep them nice and far. If you're like me, I'm like tall for a woman, you have to know both because when I'm sparring with other women, I'm usually the taller one. When I'm sparring with men, I'm usually the shorter one. So like being really comfortable in my long game isn't helpful. But either way, you have to know both anyway. Um, because moving in is how you are aggressing towards your opponent and really hitting them hard, knocking their winds out of them, getting their solar plexus, getting them in the chin. And long range is typically how you're escaping, keeping your distance. You can rest this way. So you're moving in and out. I'm gonna take my ring off. All right, so the first one we're working on is straight to the body. So we're starting with the inside range. So on the inside range, you want to have shorter punches. So we're not doing long straights. We're doing straight to the body. So we're having a nice bend in our knees and we're thinking about punching somewhere in the stomach. So the idea is get below their guard and you're just doing the low punches. 
When you're punching to the body, you're not punching down, you're punching straight from your face. So straight from your face, you're just bending the knees. For taller folks, you move in and you widen your stance so you're not like, you know, um, really with your knees over your toes. So I typically will move in, when I'm moving around, I have a narrow stance, when I move in, I have a wider. So we're just gonna do straight to the body. So it's just basically a squat with straights. Notice I'm pivoting on my cross. You can take a break. You can add some footwork to this. Just staying low in your streets. All right, adding some cardio, jumping jacks. If you have a downstairs neighbor, you can do this guy. I think it's cute. I don't. I feel like I really feel the burn, but you can do the fast one too if you want to get your cardio at foot in the morning. It's morning for me. Take the opposite direction and do these high knees. My knees never really get that high because I have like, you know, old I have hip things, but you can really get them high. So yeah, bulbs. Or you can just get your knees up. High knees are good because you're practicing that like explosive movement that happens a lot in boxing. Level change. You're also giving yourself a lot of flexibility in the hips, building up those calf muscles. What are we doing now? Oh yeah, I watched this TikTok video from a man this morning that talked about short range, long range. Hooks. So the hook is, you drop your guard typically, grab your beer mug, use your pivot to drive your punch back to your face. That's Genevieve's classic punch. Or I'm sorry, classic hook. So practicing the hooks. And this, according to the man, and also just this is the close range hook. So I always tell people you're going for so across your side of the face with this hook, and you want to be in close range. So you move in, hook to the body, going for those solar plexers, hook to the face, hook to the body, I'm bending my knees a lot more, hook to the face. So I'm doing a level change with hooks. I like to start narrow, widen stance, narrow up. Okay, so that's short range, so practice that. You can do it with the level change like we were doing before. If you have a bag, you can practice on your bag. I should have told you that before. You can pause me and wrap up and put your gloves on. Let's work on that long range hook. So fingers to your face for the short range, fingers to the ground in the long range. The idea is no matter how you're punching, all four knuckles are gonna hit your opponent's face, the bag, the mitt. If you're on mitt work, you want your all four knuckles to hit this lovely dot right here. It makes the most beautiful sound when you hit it right. It's just so inspiring. So. You can practice on these. You just want to look up mitt holding for long range hooks because they're new. it's a little bit different. Basically, you're gonna same thing, but you're not grabbing a beer mug anymore. I don't know really what you're grabbing, and you don't need to bend as much in the knees. So this is like you want to hit them in the side of the face. You want to go around their guard, but you're not close range. You don't want to get close range. You want to stay a little bit further and hit them in the side of the face. 
You can do it as a low punch, going a little further, hitting them in the body. It's not my style. I always tend to do longer punches, especially hooks to the face. I don't know the shape of my body. I don't get enough momentum, but we're just practicing throwing that punch with our knuckles to the ground, bringing them back to your face. Kind of like the cool circles. Like I feel like it's when I did capoeira. It was like this. Just working on the long range. And as we're doing this, we're thinking about when we're repetitively doing hooks on hook days. Some of you might feel pain in your shoulders or your lats and that can cause like if you're feeling that every time you're throwing hooks you can cause a lot of tears damage rotary cuff issues that I have um, so you just want to be super cautious with the hooks that you're never winding up you're always throwing every punch in general from your face line so even though it's not from your face your fist is in the line of the face and you're moving it with your pivot your hips basically not you're not swinging this helps no one it's just this twisting momentum and once you get out of the swinging habit and into the twisting with the momentum you'll see this is actually way more effective your punches are going to be much harder especially if you're grounding before you throw it I mean, just putting the weight in your sturdy foot into the ground and it's not going to hurt you and you're going to be able to spend a longer time in the ring because you're getting stamina because you're not wasting energy on that swing right you're just twisting okay back to cardio what do i have for us high knees oh yeah Do this front, get the elbow, get the front of that. Let's do the side knee to elbow. Did we just see my hairiest armpits? There you go. Brings all the girls to the yard. My armpit here does. Okay. Bringing it up. Oh, I can feel it in my hip flexors. I'm just going to go ahead and one of my boxers says clean the barrel. Scrub the barrel. However you release your hip flexors. Okay. Moving on to our next. Now that we actually let's go ahead and shadow box those things. So we did the level change. Oh no, we didn't do the level change. We just did the inside straights. We did the close range hooks to the body, to the head. We did the long range hooks to the head. So, shadow boxing, you're just kind of remembering all those three things that we did and put them in together however you want. You can add footwork. If you like, don't know what footwork is, stationary punchings, coup. I have like a TikTok that shows you, oh no, I haven't made the footwork one, but it'll show some footwork. We can work on that. If you have something that you've been working on, bring it in. Sometimes I give people the homework, which is Common homework, bringing your punches always back to your face like there's a rubber band. Not swinging your hooks. A lot of people are just making smaller hooks. That's what I'm always working on. Making more of a, what do they call it? I don't remember the word, but like a cross between an uppercut and a hook. Kind of the motion I go for. Some people are working on keeping their back foot on the ground. Some people are working on pivoting on their ones. Some people are working on a pivot and footwork. Some people are working on keeping their 
good bend in their knees, widening that stance for the hook, narrowing that stance for movement. Okay, shake it out. We got those. We got those. Let's do some of these jumping jacks. They're cute. If you're feeling like you want to go for it, I always sprain my like groin when I do this, but there's these star ones. Then there's regular jumping jacks. These are my favorite ones where you cross your feet. They look real cute. Hey. Okay. Airspeed drag. What was the one that I did last time that I loved last class? Oh, we did this. Yeah, you squat and bring your knee to elbow. Let's do a couple of those. Squat, knee to elbow. Squat, knee to elbow. Leg, obliques. Okay. How am I on time? Um, we're gonna do a really important part of range, which is moving in with the two. Okay, what that means is your jab is one, your cross is two, cross is with your dominant hand. So your one is your longest range punch. Punch the furthest away. You turn that baby all the way over. So your knuckles hit your opponent, all four of them. And then your two is slightly closer. So if you look here, one, two, I actually step in a tiny bit with my two as I pivot because I like to move in with the two. It's a popular move. That's why one, two, three is a good combo. You're far away, set it up, move in a little bit with the two, then go under the guard with the three, add on a four just to get them. So we're gonna do that combo. One, moving in with the two, go below the guard for the three, hit them with the four. Okay, if you're doing it on the bag, power punch, the big one. Don't be naked handed on the bag, please. I'm not hitting it really hard. It's one, two, three, <gasps> really hard with the four. Okay, trying that combo. One, two, three, four. One, move in with the two, three, four. My knees really bend with the hooks. My stance even widens a bit when I start to throw the hooks. Just ever so slightly a widening in stance. You can barely tell, but if you watch it in slow-mo, here, I'm gonna do it in slow-mo. One, two. As I pivot the three, I slightly step out just a tiny bit. And four, and I weight shift my back hand. And these are inside hooks, so fingers to your face. So all four of the knuckles are hitting there. And then I like the big old step back. That's how I get back to my original place. some jumping jacks, however you're going to do them. Some jump squats. More stationary squats. Okay, now we're going to move out. So let's say this asshole lured me in and I'm in the inside. And now they're just like pummeling me and I can't get out and I'm just feeling like this happens. Oh, especially if they're taller. And you go in there thinking you're gonna really get them with the low body punches and they just are like pummeling you, they know all your moves and you're stuck really close to them. You wanna get out. There's a lot of ways you can do them. We're just gonna do the classic moving out with the one, two. So, one, two, that's it. Okay, one, or one, one, two. So, I'm gonna push 
as I step, push as I step. Okay, push as I step, push as I step. So I'm like, fuck away from me, keep away from me. moving it in with the two is moving out with the one okay so you can try the moving in and then moving out moving in moving out moving in punches thinking about as you're moving out really trying to get somebody the fuck away from you so that means you might hold your one out a little bit longer as you're moving out you can't really hold it out that's like violation of rules but just extending it all the way giving yourself some distance okay um, let's do some knee to elbow, and I'm going to tell you what we're going to do next. Just a couple minutes. I just want to show you my special little secret move for what I talked about. I know nobody's sparring right now, but maybe somebody has had that experience where they're like stuck in a corner, or you know, you feel like you've been really good, and then you get this like guy who's like two feet taller than you, and been, you know, is on the amateur team and just really wants to pummel you and you're just stuck in his inside range and you want to get out I'm going to show you something I learned really early for some nice stretch on my hip flexors it's called the shoe shine and I'm in my first gym in Bellingham and then I did a little adjustment to it so the shoe shine is five six five six three two you can practice that. Six, three, two, five, six, five, six, three, two. If you're new to boxing, you can just stay here. If you've been sparring and you really want to make this work, we can do the next thing. So when we do the five, six, we're like fucking doing the five, six. We're punching this person who's being an asshole in the gut and we're like really trying to hurt them. Like, you won't because they probably have abs of steel, but you kind of want to try really hard to knock the wind out of them. So to do that, you're going to fucking ground your feet. That's where you get the power from. The Earth, Mother Earth is giving you the power to really knock the wind out of this guy, and you're just popping up. Remember when I was like, high knees is where we get our explosive movement? This is what I'm talking about. You are exploding up into this guy's fucking solar plexus. You want to get him right here under the ribs and just <clears throat> and you're keeping your guard up high so he can't fucking get you and you're going really low because he's probably taller than you and you're just fucking pummeling him just just four times though but five six five six and I'm gonna add a little move and then the three two before you're gonna get really fucking low and you're gonna do a weave but like a crazy weave so it's like you're stepping under a sticky bush weave and step around right so like you're stepping out and you're like navigating through those tricky blackberry bushes and you're going under but small range of motion so i'm exaggerating it's like this and then pivot on the front foot but really it's just gonna be five six five six weave three two but i lift up the foot because you're probably gonna have to actually step over their foot or their legs because you want to if they want you in close range, you'll fucking stay in close range. Five, six, five, six, step, pivot, three, two. Five, six, five, six, step, pivot, three, inside, three, two. Three is going again, same place, two. Probably won't land the three, you'll probably get their elbow, but it's just setting you up for the two, which is the most powerful punch of them all. And it's also sending you back. That's when you're getting the fuck out. So I don't do fives and sixes on this kind of heavy bag. I use an uppercut bag, but I just graze the bag 
I'm not trying to like break anyone's fingers. Five, six, five, six, step, three, two. Five, six, five, six, we step, three, two. Beginners are just five, six, five, six, three, two. All right, we're gonna shadow that. Shake it out. I didn't get to abs today. That's cool we did these guys. You can do your own abs. You can keep practicing all of those things that we just did with shadow boxing. Practice them on the bags. You can get a partner and practice them with mitts. You and your partner are both boxers. You can get a really loud timer. Put on your headgear and just practice those specific drills with your partner. Um, you can do one person does an entire five six five six three two and then the other person does the entire thing It's I know you're not supposed to Spar without somebody timing you but if you're doing like if you have a loud timer So you know when to stop and you're doing a drill You have your mouth guard and your headgear It's cool like you know and obviously I Don't recommend sparring with the mat unless you really know what you're doing so probably you would only spar with somebody that you're comfortable being maskless around like your partner or your mom or whatever all right well thank you for watching this youtube video and for making me work out i don't know if anybody's gonna watch it but this is my first youtube experience and i really like it and i'm gonna figure out how to upload this so box on people